our London aid workers are heading into the world's largest refugee camp. This is home to more than 800,000 Rohingya Muslim refugees. And thousands keep crossing the border, escaping persecution in Buddhist-dominated Myanmar. Dr. Ramez Mameni, Genevieve Jones Hernandez, and Sarah Wade have traveled the world helping refugees, but nothing can prepare them for what lies ahead, all of which they capture on camera. We're on our way now to the Apulunga refugee camp. It is a restricted site. It's controlled by the army. I've had a few comments here and there, obviously asking me if I'm doing the right thing, leaving a toddler um, behind for a period of time. But ultimately, he's surrounded by family, friends. You know, this is why I work for charity. I work for charity because I want to help the people who really need it. There isn't anywhere else that any of us would rather be because the need is so great here. This is the gateway to the camp, where aid workers register and refugees receive essentials. There are 6,000 that's come in in the last three days. What it is that they receive here is a bag with, with a bucket and I guess some, some building essentials. The Humanitas charity are heading deep into the camp where there's no aid to set up a medical center. We are walking to set up our clinic um, where there are no one else, no one else has reached yet. So obviously it's going to be tough. I'm speechless in terms of how far this extends into this land. It just goes on and on and on forever. For the next three weeks, this two-hour trek will be their daily commute to their temporary medical centre. The next day, word spreads help has arrived. But can a small team of aid workers from London cope with this many patients? They have to prioritise. Women and children suffering from lack of food, disease and injuries from their journey to the camp. Here is our clinic. The day. He's got a child who hasn't eaten for three days and has bad diarrhea. Some children have been born on the 800 mile trek from Myanmar. Tell her that this is her baby's heart. Hundreds of others have been born in the camp. This is a, a newborn baby. It was born yesterday and they tied the umbilical cord with just a piece of rope. just an incredible pain with all these sores all over their heads and really dry skin and cracked skin all over their body. So we were, you know, literally just rubbing them down with Vaseline and cream just to soothe that pain that they're in. She came two hours ago and she's the new arrival. She, ha she has pain on her body and she is five months pregnant. Day, like it's been non-stop and they're shivering, coughing, throwing up, um, it's, it's just, it's, uh, so that Every day the team managed to see around 80 patients, but with hundreds of thousands needing help, they move their clinic around the camp, trying to reach as many as they can. Their mother could not make the trip, so she had to pass her baby on to her other, bigger baby to bring here. The, the baby is ten and a half days and hasn't been breastfed. There are so many babies, newborns, 14 days old, uh, don't have any food, starving. So it's, a, it's, it's an underweight baby. She was prescribed uh, vitamins, but just for her, not for the baby. Honestly, uh, it's like the baby's um, yeah, uh, dying. So we've just um, organised for her to go and get referred because she needs to go to a hospital. For that, she needs to have her ID card. Um, and then straight after her, we've just been talking to um, another lady who's just took 11 days to travel here after watching her husband get shot. Um, it's really horrendous stories. Um, 
and they really need our help. Does she know why they had to leave? Yeah. I didn't. She came here because they are torturing them. What's her name? Tonam ki Ferdos. She's 13 years old. Yeah. Does she remember what happened before she came here? So they curse? The Buddhist people drove them away. She saw that the houses are being torched and killing happening. So this is why she came here. The Myanmar government strongly denies it is persecuting the Rohingya. The UN describes their treatment as ethnic genocide. I'm just uh, fascinated by how resilient these people are with their cooking, their survival, their minimal. They've got a car battery, I think, connecting themselves to have a little bit of electricity. Got their firewood over there. Some families have lived here for years in a stateless world, stuck on the border of two countries that do not want them. We're going to continue to see the patients we saw yesterday, check up, and then we're going to head all the way down there for the second part of the day. So tell her that we're very sorry that she lost her baby. I think we expected to turn up and be working alongside a lot more organizations or volunteers. We've worked within the Syrian refugee crisis and it was full of organizations and volunteers and people there on the ground and I think we expected this to be slightly similar and it isn't. Her pulse is very low. So we're just rushing to the hospital. We got these newly arrived Rohingyas and severe, severe dehydration. There is absolute lack of aid for these people. Larger international aid organizations complain Myanmar has blocked aid convoys and staff reaching the refugee camp. It's time for the team to head home, but more refugees arrive in biblical numbers. All of these people tired, sick, hungry, and yet to reach their final destination in this camp and set up home. It's not so much as a difficult thing to be here. I think it would be more of a difficult thing to leave, knowing that we're leaving these people in such a dire situation. This is my last exit from the camp, because we're heading home tomorrow. Somehow, they're incredible. And you know the way that I see it, we're here to be a positive influence positive you know so we have to come with energy come with smiles come with balloons bubbles as well as the medicine show them that people care